the whole study of paleoclimatology is to, to go back in time to, to use what's when we had a lot more CO2 in the atmosphere, the sea level was a lot higher, the temperature, to figure out how things work. We have some confidence to say that keep putting more CO2 in the atmosphere, we're gonna, you know, X, Y, and Z are gonna continue to happen. Because, and we know from the past that, you know, back four million years, sea level was like 25 to 50 feet higher than today. But what's a good way to say that when someone would be like, bah, four million years ago, what's the confidence level of saying things like that or how should they be said, I guess? Yeah, I mean, it's true that, that when the further back in time, the less confidence we have in our ability to, to say, oh, here's what the weather was like or here's what the gases were like. Um, but what we can do is we can use the last 100,000 years where we actually have air samples and say, oh, when this air was like this, we see these other things happening on the planet. And so we use that kind of analogy to say, oh, when we see those other things like fossil records or we see ocean levels or some type of, um, of marker in, in some fossil that is around an ocean, then we could say that might have had a similar thing, a similar pattern as what we see today. But we're also able to get some research and some information on CO2 in the atmosphere going back over 800,000 years in the past through ice core data. And what our research in ice core data shows is that basically there was a fluctuation um, uh, during that time that averaged about 280 parts per million in the atmosphere. So since the Industrial Revolution, where we kind of say, okay, 280 was our normal for 800,000 years, we're now well over 415 parts per million. Um, and that is seen as an explosion of carbon dioxide in the last few hundred years. So people say, how do you know what the, how much carbon was in the atmosphere 800 years, 800,000 years ago? And you're seeing ice core samples. What's in there? So ice core samples actually have air bubbles that are trapped inside. Um, and the scientists are drilling down um, and taking different cores um, and dating those cores and then measuring the concentration of the different gases um, that come out of those bubbles as they're melted. It's hard to predict exactly, you know, what that's going to mean. You know, we have ways to generate energy without burning fossil fuels. We have ways to live more sustainably. Um, and some people would say our life might even improve. Uh, I tell my students, would you rather be 45 minutes in traffic to go 15 miles or, or take a train and be able to finish your homework while you're on the train um, and, and maybe we're listening to music or chatting with a neighbor? It depends on the kind of car. <laughs> is, that, is that the right answer? <laughs> it, it could be, you know, I mean, or some people are advocating for public transit or yeah, something like yeah. that. We have created some changes on our planet, some good, some not so good. Maybe the balance of it is not so good for, for long term, but that doesn't mean we can't reverse that and, and make things better. Uh, and it doesn't have to make our life worse, but we have to do something.